Welcome back. Um, I have to finish this, so I'm going to perhaps gloss over some of this a little bit. But I've done a little bit since you've been gone. Get rid of those. Um, all I've done here is I've colored these slight gray. They were white before, both of those. And I'll show you something I'll do with those in a minute. Um, these here, I have added a drop shadow underneath, 2430, 100 which to me doesn't seem too bad, particularly if I remove that. Yeah, that's not bad. I can live with all of that. Um, now, these here though, that's where I left them. Now, I've made another one here, exactly the same way I've done those, just shorter, smaller. Ones that are a bit wider here, but same here and same distance off here. Whoops, make that a circle. Still do a circle, try there. This is where you need to double click. Doesn't like something I've done there. And as you can see, and I've added that, which is purely circle. I worked at that point slightly off white. I never use white. Just don't, don't like it, too, too stark. Um, and then all I've done is I've added, let me get rid of that one. I've added a drop shadow underneath. There it is there. And as you can see, I do it at 2, 4, 15, 60. I like it to be subtle. Don't want a big heavy shadow. Big heavy shadow implies it's a, a you know a, a big step there, and there's not. It's a minor, minor thing. It's barely there. If you look on these, it's barely there. It's perhaps more noticeable on this one, but it's barely there. Um, and then I've added a drop shadow to the whole white face, and it's just to tone it down a bit. Um, as you can see, two four, so slightly offset it, but a hundred. You can see the difference. It's very subtle. There's not a lot there. I just didn't want a stark circle. Um, I still got some work to do in there, which I'll do shortly. Um, get rid of that. So that's that. Now the only other thing I need to do, I didn't show you with these, that's not final. You can see it sort of lacks a little bit of detail. So we go into color curves and probably that one. You can see these are the ones I've got loaded in here. That's perhaps a little bit more subtle. That one's totally over the top. Go back to the first one. So you can do that, which I don't mind. It's nothing, you know, on all fairness, the originals are pretty well just, you can see it varies of grey and other things. Um, hard to get the detail on that sort of stuff, so I just tend to make this up a little bit. But you'll notice, if I start moving these around, if you're watching the this over here, it varies in different. So you can make it darker, closer to the end there. That one does appear, but if I go up at will, you can see it's quite dramatic what you can do. And it's all just personal preference, really. There's no right or wrong way, it just is what it is. See, I don't mind that. If I save that, undo it, go back into that tool, whoops, color curves. That's the one I was going to use, and that's it. Slightly changed. It's subtle. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind that. It's a little bit more progressive. That this one's tends to be so these shaded areas in the middle, which aren't entirely correct. I think it's whoops. That one is probably closer to the mark, so we'll call that. I think. Now, all I was going to show you here. Once again, I don't want to waste too much time on this. These markers, like those, yes, that's why I left it unchecked. As I said, those I've just changed the color to gray. These I've changed the same color gray. Um, or what you can do, which I do quite a bit, um, what you can also see, see, it's a little notchy there on that. I'm jumping around here a little bit, but that's because of what I just did. Um, I'll try the GMIC and see what it does. Uh, go down to repair. Sorry, it's waiting on me. Anastropic. 
take it up to about 100. I love the way this just disappears. Actually, I'll take a top one because that was the one I was looking at. That's the edge there. You can see that's having a fit already, but I'm not finished. One, take it up to about four. And I'm trying to clear that out a bit. Or maybe five. Apply. And I'll try that. You can also watch here too, but unfortunately it just takes a little while. Yeah, that's not bad. You can do it again, but I won't. You'll never see that detail. You can't even see it there, but if you zoom right in, you'll never see it in the watch. But yeah, I prefer that because that's more progressive. Bit of a shadow there, and it gets lighter. I don't mind that. Um, sorry, getting back. Yeah, that's not bad. I can look at that. I could have cleaned that up. That's what's actually caused that is I quite often will make a point from there to that intersecting point there, and you can see what actually happens. This is before you do any of that treatment I was just doing. If I go, to, if I'm actually on that, I am. See, it deletes, gets rid of that. We do that before you actually perform that, and it gets rid of it. I forgot to do it. I'm not that phased by it. It's not that bad. Um, and as I said, I need to wrap this up. That one there, Control C, layer above. Control V, so you just copy the same thing straight back over itself, click off it. Now you make sure you're on that top layer. So there's the top one, there's the bottom one. All right. Sorry. What there? What have I done? There and there. There's the original one, there's the one I just put on. I like that. Control C, delete, Control V, and all you can see it's highlighted that. Now I go white to black. Make sure that's linear. And this is just an overlay of sh shading, basically, to give it a little bit of detail. I don't want it quite that black. You do each one. You try to simulate where the light's coming from. It'll always be this top corner. Don't like that. Go a bit further out there. It's never quite right, but you can get it somewhere near it. See so there. See the white will hit that first. This is where it kind of reverts. That's not bad. You can, if you want to be really thinking about it, is go across, but I don't like that because it gives that effect and it's not what I'm after. I'm just after a general light to dark or darker, not even that dark. Something like that. And I do this on a lot of things. Um, once again, it's really not on the original. No, it's going to be that way, idiot. Um, and I, it's just how I try to get a bit of detail into it. Um, sort of be there. It's a little bit weird, that one. Because it gets pretty well all light. I'll just do it slightly darker. There you go. Now all I do, I like that, 100%, but take it down to about 25. You've seen me do this before. Merge it down. So all of a sudden, just put that slight tint on the same layer. As you can see, it's now one layer. Now I'll do a ever so slight bevel and boss, and it won't be much. That always comes up default by outer. It's painful because I never use it. Do that for probably about one and one. And all that's going to do is depth is how much it highlights the white in particular. Take it up a bit, take it down a bit, merge with layer, okay. You'll see what I mean. There's white there. I'll make that a bit stronger because it's almost lost. And do that. Layer, layer effect, the boss. I'll actually make that 100, make that 40. I'll try. No, I'll leave that at one. I don't want much. I'll make that six. You'll see this white is now a little stronger, particularly if I get a dark one. It's stronger, and it's all. The reason I do it in place is that it puts it on the correct side. If you do one at a time, 
you do it over here, you rotate it over here, it'll be back to front. So I actually get these all in place first. So it puts the light and the shadow, see the shadow there, light there, reproduces that all the way around. And then once again, I go to color, curves, probably that one, except I know, let me, yeah, I'll try that. Color, curves, maybe not that. See so that I don't mind. So again, you can play around with these. That doesn't do a lot. I didn't think it would. That one. That makes it probably too dark. It doesn't need to be that dark. You see that I don't mind. There you go. And that's basically it. Now I also, even though it's probably not. Oh, it's not there anywhere. I will put a slight shadow under these. Not these. Oh, you can, but it doesn't really do a lot. Once again, it's just a way to give it a little bit of depth. Builders, light and shadow, drop shadow. Now, this will be very minor. Two and about one, probably about five. I'll leave that at 60, see what it does. I perhaps get rid of that will give you a better idea. I'll try it on that one actually. Filters, repeat, drop shadow. See that'll do for that. That's about all it needs. If we add that back, it gives it an ever so slight a little bit of depth like it's sitting above the face, which is what I wanted to do. Um, that was that one. Now we go back to this one. This one will be slightly larger for obvious reason because it's larger. Drop shadow. Actually, I'll go back here. I've done that slightly wrong. Always like. Slight angle that way. Go there. Build in eight. Yep, do it that way. All I've done is reverse those, as you may have noticed. Always like this offset X, half of offset Y, just the way I've always done it. This I'll take this up, as you can see, two, four, probably about ten, and maybe take that up to about eighty. So yeah, don't, once again, don't like this too harsh. A lot of people do, it's just not my not my thing. I like subtle shadows. But most of these faces are quite dark. It's even that is too dark. So what I'll do is delete that. Oops. Deleted the wrong thing, didn't I? That's it. There. Delete that. Come back there. Light shadow, drop shadow. I can make that a little wider, come back to about 60. You can see, I'll take this back, take that back. You can see it's very much trial and error. Now that's better, I prefer that. It's subtle. And that's it, I wouldn't, it's only because. There's a blue, a grey, and a black, so it's all fairly dark. Um, so I don't mind that. Yep, I'll just edit that. 1, 2, 10, 60, I think. Once again, I only do this 1, 2, 10, 70. Um, is if I want to, if I change the mind, I want to go back and alter it. I actually know what it's set to, because every shadow I tend to do uh, a bit differently, just the way it is. Okay, and that one uh, was pretty much the same. One, two, five, sixty. I think it was from memory. That will be an error. Enough. Okay, that's that. I'll mark those as done. Uh, really, all that leaves. I just, uh, 
Oh yes, internals in here. Let me, this will be fairly quick. What I'll do is I'll mark these out. I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, all I've done is measure these off. This original, got those three boxes highlighted. I'll create a new layer. Now I will fill with white. Oops. I will fill with white, even though you can see these are definitely a yellowy, greeny, probably it's green really, but I want to color these in Watchmaker. Once again, beautiful thing of that is, it allows me then to mess around with the dim mode and do whatever I like. Um, so that's that's the reason behind the way I do this. Now you also want these to appear, um, these are set back as you can see slightly. So what I will do is drop these under there. All I've done is drop it under the shadow so it picks up of that shadow of the drop shadow whoops, from these. Um, gives it a little bit of depth as you can see. And it does literally look like it's sitting underneath. Um, or the other option is, which might even actually look better, let me put that back up the top where it is. Now let me do a shadow where that is now. Light and shadow, drop shadow. If I do an angle, what did I actually do it on? That was 2, 4, 30, 100. If I do that 2, 4, about, um, try about 15 and about 80. Try that. have to invert it. It was actually underneath, and it was underneath that, which is why you couldn't see it. Great drop shadow. Now, to some degree, I prefer that because it gives depth this way as well, which is what I'm after. It's done it there. I go a little bit more. Shadow, drop shadow. about 20 maybe take it down to 70 just to see what it does a bit too light take that up because I definitely want it to be obvious that it's set down and once again shadow shadow white light that's good, I can live with that. Now I'm just going to add this. Uh, it's a layer I've made before. I used to continually continue to make it and just thought this is crazy. So I kind of just use one now. Um, and I'll drop this down here directly over top of that and under that drop shadow I've got over the top. Um, I'll open this layer. Um, ignore what it's called, it just happens to be where it ended up once and it's kept the same name. Get rid of that. It'll also be in the wrong place and it's there. Let me grab it. There's a slight error there. I can see that. I'll have to come back and fix that. It's beside that. So there you go. I've left a bit on there. And that's the stuff I was talking about that gets left behind unless you delete things properly. You can see what I'm doing. And this is literally just got to be careful that you grab that. A series of rings. That's all it is. They all tend to be the same, just various. That's not bad, but how big is it? Hard to work out where the center is on this image, but it's about there. So we get rid of that, make sure that's central. Okay, try go control I will delete that off. How's that look? Once again, you can overlap these, you can put two of them to make them darker, you can color them. Um, not my cup of tea, but 
Okay, maybe even a little more. Where is that measurement? It's a bit near enough 500, it doesn't matter. So what is that? Is it 250? Yeah, it is 251, but not 250. Yep, that's right, that'll do. That'll do. See what that has done. Let me just delete that because it's doing nothing. See, it's subtle. It's not like it's there. It just tones it down a bit. So it's not quite so stark. Uh, now I'll do these. I'll be back shortly. I'll make this one, reproduce it, make the smaller one, same as I did on this up here. Just to show you this when you're doing subdolls, because the center is off center, all I've done is worked out where I wanted that. Go to rotate, you have to drag this across to the center of that, or otherwise it throws it completely out of whack. Here you go, we're done up to there. I just need to get this text on here. All I do is bring up a text layer by bringing T, put it over top of this. Now I know that's pretty well Aikens. It's that close to it, it doesn't matter. I try to get the height the same. Width could be a little wider, which it is. I can live with that. But it's so then I do that over on my untitled page where I store everything. There you can see 10, 20, 30. I know that 10 needs to be shaved down there. I'll do that in a minute. Um, it's Aikens and it's 85. So I save that on there. So I come back here, delete that, close that. Um, we will add to. Add to, where are we? That's those, that's a drop shadow over top, so we'll do it there. New layer. Now, all I do is, for instance, get the 20. Control C, copy that, come back here. Control V, you'll see the outline of this because I'm below it. As long as I get it somewhere near. See what that looks like, get rid of that. Change the color, which I can. Maybe around there. What you can also do is add another one if you so want, just to thicken it. Go across a notch, down a notch. That's basically what it does. I sometimes fill those in because that's the take the radius off, um, just to make it slightly thicker, a bit more like the original. Then add a line because I will want the 10 on the same plane so it doesn't look wrong. Come back here. This is how I mess with fonts a lot. Remove, oops, one more. Move that, delete. Now yeah, copy that. I might have to move that one further away. We'll just see how it looks to the original. Yes, I will. Dramatically, that's about there. Okay, what I'll actually do it'll be easier. Go backwards, get rid of that. Now, where have I got that 20? Right there, I'll put that one on top of that. I'll make it easier to show you. Control V, change the color. Ignoring a little bit of the image underneath because I know it's different. I will drop that about there. It's on that same line. Control C, delete because I don't want any part of it left. Now if I go back here, I'll do that. Puts that pretty well in the same plane. I will just go one over, one down. Fill the one. So it's making it slightly thicker. Now the 30. Oops. Now I've got to get. Yes, this in the same plane. What tends to happen with these? It sometimes works this way. 
and it's not going to because it's different. Okay, what I'll actually do, just mean, yeah, this is terribly out of whack. It's not right actually on the image. There you go. And I tried rotating it this way and it doesn't fix it, so it's actually not right. But that's okay. So I'm just looking what I will do. So I'll move that slightly that way. Try to get it, whoops, a circle. It's near enough. It's not bad. So if I pick that line there and stick the top of my 30 on that, I'll be roughly the same distance from the outer. Which is all I'm trying to do. Control C, come back here, Control V, change the colour. I saved it in white, I didn't have to. Now I'll we'll drop that there, Control V, I'll do another one. You can see you can do some weird shading and shadows and things if you want. And I think I'll just leave that without playing with that anymore. So that's the subdial. You'll notice that I've dropped these over top of this. Some of the images, there's a good example actually. One's below, these two are on top. Uh, same here, there you go. That's above, above, below. Makes no sense to me. Um, and I think it looks better below. Oh, sorry, above. If you stick it below, you get this rather weird. Yeah. If that was a different colour, it'll show up. But you can see the stripes. You get these rather odd stripes that I'm not convinced they are there, particularly if these are white. It's very obvious. Anyway, that's the way I do it. I find that works a lot better. Now all this leaves is, I'll do the Swiss made in a second, this bit of text which I won't bore you with but I'll show you how to do these and then I'll probably call, call this whole build quits and then just finish it and post it. So just bear with me a sec. Now while you weren't here, I just got rid of a whole bunch of guides because I don't need them there. I always leave this one so you can work out where the center of that subdial is. And actually what I quite often do, and I'll do it while I'm here, which is the text layer, that one. I'll get that one. I'll mark the center of this. I tend to draw a box. Because you're on such large scale, I'll go about three on either plane. So it's six by six, basically. You just infill that with the same black. That'll be now saved with that. Um, because what I do, this is where it gets a little tricky, I take that as a complete image, scale it down in 512, I don't lose any sleep over this at all, um, to 512 in this case, reload it back in here, and then take measurements to the centre of that square. Uh, particularly, you know, that's the center line there, we all know that, but how far is that there when you scale it down? It sometimes can be halves, uh, which you can program in Watchmaker, and I do it quite often, just to get it dead center there. The other thing I've done, I've worked out the center line of those from the center, drawn a circle, which is that guy there. And I also notice that these are about 62, they are supposed to be the 62, I actually measured one down here. Yeah, it's about 62. So what I'll do is draw a circle. There you go, now I've just drawn a circle 31 because it's from the centre, I'll do it at 12 o'clock position. So that's a 62, add a new layer. Fill that with white, which you won't see well because it's over top of white. So I can actually um, if I get rid of that just so you can see what's going on. Control, lift, arrow, no. What have I done? It's in black. That would be why. But I won't do it, as I said, exactly in white. I tend to avoid it slightly off, something like that. I just, as I said, if I'm white, so very stark. So, we control C, control V, now we move this round 
on the 30, what is 30? 30 degrees markers. Control V, take it at the same point. Minus 60. Forgot exactly where they are. Okay, they're there and there. Minus 120. Oh, believe it or not, there's a little bit of market ground here to get this detail. So what I'm going to do, I've measured it and it's basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Delete that out. And what I will do is actually delete these and drop that round, then I'll be back. Okay, I've changed it a bit. Ignore that last little bit you've seen there that's having some problems with audio. I just need to, I can fix that, but I'll have to wait till this is finished. Uh, I've decided to leave those there. What I've done is added another layer, just made rings, same size, about six pixels all the way around. And what I'll do, make those active and just round these. Once again, I need to round them in situ or in place if you prefer. Um, so it puts the shading on the right spot. If you do one, then rotate it there around where you want it. The shadow will be on the wrong side. Um, just the way it is. Um, so we go layer, layer effect, level of boss. Six, I'm going to take that up a little more. Three and three, so I could, that should be about it. That's what it's done. It's round six with the shadow there, light on this side, reverse on here. Now if I put that open, the other one underneath, now it gives that effect, which is what I'm after. Coming back here. Now I need to do this in the center, so I'll be back in two seconds. Okay, I'll quickly finish this off. There's that layer. I've dropped those rings over top to give that effect. This one I removed, by the way. That's it. Um, I've created a new layer here. I remove those, which is just it's only that internal size there. I use this as a background to tie it all together. But we get rid of both of those. Now I can basically dome this, as you can see. Um, a few different ways you can do it. Um, level and boss. You can see I've been messing around here a bit. Sometimes I use this, sometimes I don't. And you can see what it will do here. I quite often use those, but I thought I'd show you something else which I also don't mind, which you need to highlight this. This will be the last thing I'll do. And I know, just by experience, I need to go about one pixel outside. And you go into uh, filters, it's actually buried in here. Uh, in a rather, I can never find it. Render. There it is, it's under Render. Sphere Designer. Now by default, this color here, which is that one, will come up green. I don't know why. I changed it a minute ago just to check it out. And I make that a fairly dark gray. That's the only change you need to make is change this color. And you go, OK. And that's what it does. It gives you a really nice sphere. But what I do then is take this just in. It gives you this jagged edge. It's always done it. Control I just to feather the edge. Click off that. Add the background, and you can see that's the effect. And that's pretty well what I want. And what I do, see, it makes a slight difference in here with that background because you'll always get openings in here. So that's why I left that background there. Technically, you don't need it, but I think it looks better. Um, now, what I do is I quite literally. Instead of rotating this one, that, that's very hard to do what I was talking about. If you, you need to highlight each one of these, it gets a little tricky. So I do cheat in this case, is I literally take a copy of that, pick it up and move it over there. Not rotate it, or once again the shadow becomes in the reverse, which you don't want. But I just take a copy of that and drop it in there. 
and that way the light will be coming from this point. Um, so that's basically it. I'll finish the rest of this off. Thanks for watching. I'll post it and let me know what you think. Bye.